chef along the way. Yeah. And, but yeah. uh, every part of it required a kind of a utilization, I would say, of a different style. And I don't think that's anything unique. To that is just the duty and the responsibility that you have when you're playing that kind of leadership role, is to recognize what is it you're doing at that moment and what, kind, what is going to be effective. Uh, and sometimes, like I said, it can be very confrontational, very aggressive to, to negotiations, to, to mentoring, and bringing people along uh, in this kind of shared vision that, that we had at that time. And we had to build a strong constituency for it because there were a lot of people who just sort of were, okay, well, okay, we can accept that. And oh, yeah, you know, you guys commit a lot of crimes here in East LA and so on. There was just everything that was wrong with it. But that is the way it's been most of my life. It really, leadership is about, um, it, in different situations, recognizing and understanding what that situation is about and utilizing um, a, a leadership style that's going to be effective for the moment and that's going to work. And that isn't trying to mislead or, or mm -hmm. act it out. This is about the responsibility and the duty when you have people who are following, who have the shared vision, who have a duty, you have to recognize and understand that we are talking about creating a change. After all, that's what leadership is about. It isn't just for moving here to there, it's about creating, or at least the way I see it, bringing about um, dramatic change, about empowering a, a community. So all of that work, and so to me, um, that having a stake in it, as I mentioned earlier, empowering them, it was their movement. It wasn't just about Gloria Molina. It was about a whole East Side community. The Mothers of East LA were created out of that, and they they felt so very empowered that they continued to do their work. They exist today. They more recently have won a battle, and we were all a part of it as well against Exide, which is was the lead contamination facility in the city of Vernon that was contaminating many of the homes in the East Side. The Mothers of East LA and Father Moret and all of them continued in that leadership role, and they've been able to bring down a multi-billion dollar company that really was, was, was polluting and contaminating our community. So there is power in those kinds of things. You, when you empower a community, you empower everyone. They feel stronger, we're bolder for it in all that we do. So those are the lessons that I have learned along the way, but understand that you have those challenges of, um, having to, to um, deal with the consequences, recognize that it's an ongoing responsibility and duty. You don't just you know, hang it up at the end of the day and say, I'm not doing that anymore. So you have a duty and a responsibility that goes with it. And I think that's what's been important to me as I continued in my role, is to recognize that it is something that, you know, maybe my mother told me when I was a kid, that I had to do this, but I have been dealing with that ownership and responsibility ever since. And even today, as a retired elected official, I still think I have a duty and a responsibility to all of those issues and I uh, in, in providing a role. And that's what I'm hoping, that the leadership training that we do <coughs> here at the college will be about trying to embolden young people, community leadership, to recognize and understand the responsibilities and the duties they have to provide that leadership role. If we talk about change, and there's so many of us that gripe when we listen to the news and we complain when we read the paper to ourselves or you know, or you, you know, gossip about all the bad things that are going on. But it's really taking that action. It's really you know, taking on that responsibility and that role and providing leadership. And it might be a little part of what we do or a big part of it, but it's a very important, significant part that when we take on that, we understand the duty, the responsibility, I say that often, but the passion that it takes, the hard work that it takes, uh, and, and dealing with the consequences of that. Uh, and, but I think at the end of the day, uh, it is so important that we build new leadership and find ways to bring out the leadership that all of us possess, by the way, to bring it out, to strengthen it, to, to heighten it, and get it to a point so that it is functional leadership, so that it's pragmatic leadership, that it makes sense in the community, and that it is, re it is hopefully uh, with the kind of responsibility and integrity um, that is really going to bring the positive changes that we need in the community. Responsibility, integrity, and tenacity. <laughs> yeah, you gotta stick to it.
<laughs> yes, <laughs> Alfred Renteria, uh, school board member for Al Rancho Unified, and also a graduate from Al Rancho in 1979, which is your high school. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> question, <laughs> what, what leadership did you find at your high school that helped you move on into the leadership role that you, you served here in our community? You know, it's interesting. It really wasn't so much from the teachers or, or the, the, the classroom, uh, which is interesting because you all need to be motivated and inspired, and particularly when you're in school. And I really didn't get that much from, uh, from my teachers, uh, uh, the counselors, or anyone else. But there was a woman there at the school. Of all people, she was the bookkeeper. Uh, I was hired as a little student worker after work, you know, and for two hours with her. And uh, and she was the one that kept saying, <coughs> so where are you going to college? Uh, and I'm sitting there going, well, I don't know if I'm going to go. Of course you're going to college, where are you going? Um, and, and well, have you made applications? Have you done this? And it was interesting that she's the one that provided the kind of motivation for me at the time to see it and to take it for granted. Of course you're going to college. That wasn't in my family. My family was very happy for me to graduate from high school so I could go out to work and help with the family finances and all. Uh, and of course, it, in our community, and I even know I was in, was in the top level classes just because that no one had really gone, even the counselor hadn't put together. I mean, that was part of the problem that went on in the school at the time. They didn't encourage Latinos or Latinas to go on to college. I certainly wasn't motivated. If it had not been for her, it wasn't part of my family tradition and other many families that did at the time, which is a good thing. But for me, it was, it, she was the one that did it, and it was through that process that she, you know, motivated me, inspired me, and, and emboldened my, me to, to go on to to, uh, to college and to think about it. Um, but I must say, it's really very sad that at the time, with educators, even with counselors, there wasn't the kind of motivation at that time with Latino students. I, I saw that across the board. I mean, I wasn't a great academic student. I mean, so I wasn't at the highest level. But I certainly could get myself into college with my grades. But it wasn't thought about at all. Nobody put an application in front of me. Nobody encouraged me as far as counselors and teachers. But it was the bookkeeper. And I, I still keep in touch with her. Um, right. and, uh, and, and it's interesting. We all need somebody to mentor us at that, at that way. Yes. And of course, that is why it's so important to, to now create those positive affirmations for children that they're going to go into college and or they're going to go on and get a degree and do those kinds of things and it can be done. That's why I'm such a big part of trying to make sure that in our community we put positive affirmations uh, for our children. They have to see us in these positions. Uh, you know, I, they, I want them to assume that they can take over my duty and my responsibility as a supervisor as an elected official. We need to break through all of those barriers. And of course today there are more positive affirmations and there's much, much more work and the schools have gotten so much better about trying to encourage all students to achieve and, and be stronger. But I must tell you at that time as a Latina, uh, as, a, um, as, as a kid growing up um, in that school district, there just wasn't the motivation and the push at that time to put, to put us into college, but she did. And, um, and I've always been grateful to her. Well, thank you. That is, that's a great story. <laughs> we, always, we always talk at, um, at the college level yeah. about everyone is an educator and everyone's contributing to it. You're, you're, that's a wonderful and, yeah, story. And yes, here was the, the bookkeeper who was the one that, that <laughs> yeah, motivated that's me. Great. Another question. Yes, please. recommend to other people to be a part of it? Is that getting it, first getting involved. For getting in involved. Activity. Well, I must tell you that I've always um, had an interest in what's going on in my neighborhood and my community. Uh, and so that's number one. I think you really need to educate our community. I had a, my high school teacher, Mr. Walker, um, was 
a crazy educator. Um, and, and one of the things he used to say is that everyone must read their newspaper every single day, at that time, of course, and that that was a civic duty that we had to ourselves and, and to our community. Uh, and, and what he used to do is he would come in and tell us about what he had read in the paper. And, you know, the Russians are coming into Cuba, and they're going to be setting up their, you know, It was just amazing the stuff he used to tell us. And we would believe it. Of course, that was going on at the time, but not to the extent that he was talking about. And all of a sudden, some of us started realizing we better read the paper, because he was tricking us most of the time and misleading us and misinforming us. Uh, because he wanted to let us know that there were things going on outside of Pico Rivera that we had to be aware of and informed of so that, anyway. so. That's number one in that, is trying to keep informed in your community. So once you do that, and then of course getting involved, getting the information yourself about um, what is going on. And if there is a change that you would like to see, you know, in, in, in a, and in every neighborhood in the community, we want, like to see change. We want our sidewalks fixed, we want more police protection, we want to build up a park, whatever it is that we're doing, then we have to take on that leadership role. Now, then we have to make a judgment as well as to how are we gonna play out this leadership role. And it is interesting, I mean, you, you, as I said before, you need to be bold, you need to be strong, there has to be tenacity, you have to be willing to take consequences, and everybody says, well, I don't have the time, or, but even if, if, if you're involved in that, to start getting involved, uh, you have to start taking some ownership of that issue to build leadership. And that is to start a strategy or a plan of what is it that you want to see changed and how you're going to do that and provide that kind of leadership role and hopefully inspire and motivate others to continue um, to, to be a part of that plan and that battle or that challenge that you're in. And of course, once you start doing that, you, you start, I, I don't want to say you put little notches on your belt, but, but you do have certain little accomplishments that you can create, and you realize that it, you in fact can make and bring about change. And in many instances, even though you may not have the ability to take on the consequences and all of the responsibility that go that, trying to bring out leadership in other people is also a leadership skill set. Mm -hmm. So that it may not be, you may not be the one that wants to run for city council, mm -hmm but you might be the one uh, that is going to hopefully inspire someone else and you're going to be part of that team of getting them elected. <laughs> Certainly when we decided as a group that we were challenging the men, I was not planning on being the candidate. I was the campaign manager, that, that was my role. Um, I've always kind of been very, um, I, I don't, don't fit the profile of a politician, let me just put it that way. Uh, and, <laughs> and, uh, I sometimes speak my mind, which is not a very good thing. But anyway, so I was looking for a candidate. I wasn't going to be the candidate. So sometimes your leadership responsibility is to build a team so that we can get that person who's going to be the candidate. So to, to run that. And so it, it's like anything else. It's a plan. It's a mission. But you, once you start getting, if in fact you're going to be a part of wanting to bring about that change, even though you may not lead the group, you have to understand that that leadership responsibility is still there. Those, you need to have values. There has to be integrity. There has to be a passion. There has to be a clear understanding that there's going to be consequences along the way. That you're going to have to take some ownership uh, and, and there's going to be duties that are going to be assigned to it. But it, it is always about testing and bringing it about. I mean, I was listening to some of the young people that want to bring out more and be more of a, uh, a stronger and more powerful leadership group here and bring more leadership onto the, the campus. I think that's a wonderful thing. And just organizing, preparing for it, dealing with it, and recognizing that I think that is a very, very bold first step understanding that it, it's something that hopefully is a real mission for you, that you're not gonna give up on it until it's done, 
recognizing and understanding that, and hopefully trying to get that shared vision with many, many more people is, is part of the duty and responsibility as well. That way you can boldly move forward on, on that. But certainly um, bringing on and, uh, and encouraging people to take on leadership roles is a very important part of a leader as well, to mentor people into that level, to make sure that they're prepared to coach them, to assist them in that way. Uh, because that, then again, you, that's what we want. We want to build leadership all of the time. Um, we're not, we're talking about a very democratic process, not a dictatorship, I'm the leader and I'm in charge of it. Instead, it's how do we collectively have this kind of shared vision? How do we move it forward? How do we all play uh, an active role? I don't know if that answers your question, Annette, but for the most part, it's recognizing and understanding that you're a leader as well. And even though you're not going to be the front person, you still have all of those same elements will have to play a role in, in the kinds of things. You wouldn't be a part of wanting that kind of change if you weren't willing to accept some of those, that ownership and responsibility that goes with it. Whittier is going through dramatic change itself, uh, Supervisor Molina, and thank you in the past for your support of our efforts to stop the oil drilling, at least for the time being, okay? You were absolutely eloquent when that time came. Uh, the reality is that as a result of the California Voting Rights Act, uh, the city has uh, is dealing with a new issue, and that is for the first time we're going to have district elections, and we can anticipate <laughs> in the near future that we'll have hopefully one or more individuals that will represent previously unrepresented areas. They will be dealing with a power system that's been in place here for generations. So it'll be one individual, perhaps two over the next decade, that will have to deal with the power structure that's been in business here for 35, 40 years, and is really hesitant to let go of their power. What advice would you give that, would you give that to be named leader in the future? To that, that leader in the future? Yeah. Well, boldness is an important <laughs> When you are tackling something, you're going to have to recognize that when you're tacking, tackling mm -hmm. something as, um, I don't say it's difficult, but it, it's just not the norm. You're changing the norm. Mm -hmm. So consequently, there are going to be people that are going to be unhappy with you. And you're, that is the consequences of how you're going to move forward. Now. That doesn't mean that they're going to be unhappy with you forever, that hopefully you're going to bring them along to recognize that it's an important change, it's essential. There are those that are just not going to come along, and that's okay. But I still think that as this bold effort begins, uh, it has been challenged already, and so finally it's getting happen. It took almost a lawsuit. I don't know if it went through a lawsuit, but it certainly was a threat of a lawsuit to make it happen. Um, they use the law, and it's about time because there has to be a recognition that, that the diversity of, of Whittier needs to be represented on the city council. So, And there are powers there that are just not willing to accept it uh, for whatever reason. So boldness is going to have to be a big part of it. Uh, at this, you know, when, when I decided to challenge the men in the community, and luckily we beat them, um, and if we didn't beat them, either way, I needed to go back to them and tell them. If, if we lost, we were going to tell them that we're going to continue to, to pursue this. In other words, you, this is not going to defeat us. We, we, we set out to, to take you on because you needed to understand this is very important to us. And so if we lost, we were going to go back to them and let them know that we put together a very solid campaign, we worked very hard, we did all, even though we lost, we're not going away. That was a very mm -hmm. important thing that we recognized very early in our campaign. Luckily, we won. Well, we didn't go spit in their eye either. We went back and said, this is going to be the new norm. <laughs> so we need your help to be a part because this is an important change. Regrettably, they didn't accept it. Instead, those powers at that time, the Latino men in our community, and the political men still thought, well, isolated incident, we'll mm -hmm. beat them the next time. And, 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 and I think that, that there's still always those powers that are going to be there that can't accept the change. So consequently, you're going to have to be patient with them, believe it or not. I know that's a hard thing to, for, for me to say that you probably don't think because I possess very little of it, patience. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, on, honestly, you have to be patient with them because they don't realize that this is a good change, a positive change, <clears throat> that it's moving the community forward. Yes, they're giving 
up a little of their power, some of their power. But at the end of the day, it's going to be positive overall. And that's, I think that you need to educate them. I really do think that's the other duty that we have in this leadership role. You can't just be in their face and say, hey, you know. It, 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 so even though you don't acquiesce, in other words, you can't sit there and because that would be, you, you, when, when you build this kind of a leadership, they're going to take tremendous pride in hopefully creating this transition and being part of this change. And, and they should enjoy it and be a part of it. But the way that they're going to be effective <laughs> is by educating the rest of the community. You don't want to have uh, a situation where it's going to be at, at on. And it might be initially, and it will be initially, and that's okay, because they aren't going to dismiss you either. They can't. So it's trying to find that balance of how you're going to, how the community is going to accept this change. And of course, recognize and understand, and I think that this is the other role that we uh, duty that a leader has as well, is that you are going to be monitored and watched. So who, first one who goes up there, they're going to have, you're going to have to have a higher standard for that individual than the rest of the members of the council. So they're going to be looking at everything that they do. And so that person is going to have to have set the highest of standard because everywhere, if something happens, if in fact they get caught for something wrong or, you know, get fined for something or caught drunk driving, they'll pay the price and the whole community will pay the price. So, you know, t uh, taking on that kind of ownership and responsibility, so the standard must be high because that's how you're going to educate the rest of the community. This kind of change is going to be a positive thing. But it, it, it you do have to recognize as well that part of that bold entrance into this new role getting the kinds of leaders that you're going to need to take on these roles and responsibilities, they're also going to have to recognize and understand that they have to be patient and educate and bring the others along. Not an easy thing to do, but it is a smart thing to do uh, because you're going to need each other as you continue to work with each other if, in fact, you're truly interested in, in being a part of a city and the civic well-being of the city and not just saying, you know, getting up there and pounding your chest and I'm the new leader and the new sheriff in town and here it is. <laughs> That's not the way it's going to operate effectively. It could work initially, but it won't operate effectively in the long run. So it, it is understanding all of those duties and responsibilities, but it's going to be a tough change because of one of the things that we know about leadership and, and the power that leadership has is that once that starts rising, it, take, it takes away from someone else. But let's hope that we're never telling them that, that it's ha, 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 there it is. Hopefully what we're doing is saying it's, a, it's, a trans, it's the transformation that we need. It's a good thing. And hopefully educating them to come along. And they're going to have to accept that giving up of that little bit of power. Uh, and power is a tough thing to give up on. I mean, all of us recognize how hard that is. But, um, but again, you never acquiesce to the level of, oh, you might hurt their feelings. Screw that, as far as I'm concerned, okay? That's the boldness of it. I mean, because if this is right and you believe it to be right, then you are not going to acquiesce in order just to make them feel comfortable. That is also yeah. a duty and a responsibility that a leader has. You're going to have to be bold and strong if, in fact, what you are doing is the right thing to do on, you know, that you believe it's the right thing to do. So if you passionately believe it, there are going to be consequences, and it's just, just for you, but the consequences for others as well. And that is the responsibility, the duty. There's been consequences in the past that they didn't take into account in the, those kinds of instances. So it's going to be an interesting kind of um, transformation and change, uh, but, but hopefully it'll be the kind of positive change uh, that this community will need. And, uh, and I'm always disappointed uh, that there are so many people who want these kinds of things, want this kind of change for all the wrong reasons, and so be very careful. There are many people who go into these roles and responsibilities not recognizing it's about lifting and empowering the, other, the entire community. Instead it becomes, okay, I, you know, I'm now, quote, the honorable, and I give out contracts, and I do, and they do all of the things that are terrible and embarrass all the rest of us um, when they have the, when they take on, unfortunately, those roles and responsibilities.
Um, whether it's, um, you know, we elect our city councilors from the whole Tampa city, or whether we do it within districts, it's sad how few people are voting. Yes. Do you have any quick, <laughs> quick statements to make uh, to this group about that and your reaction over time? Well, I'm very disappointed. Official. I just went through an election and saw the, the lowest voter turnout mm -hmm. I've ever seen, and people who were complaining every minute of the day about what was wrong with the community and what's wrong with the city. And yet at the end of the day, and particularly young people, let me give you a statistic uh, in the city elections before this last election. In the November election in the city, that only 6% of the voters in the November elections in LA, uh, in the city of LA, only 6% were under 50 years of age. Wow. wow. Isn't that an amazing statistic? If that doesn't make you angry to change that and take ownership of that, I don't know what it's going to take uh, because it just it's a shameful kind of situation. And, and again, everybody says, well, it doesn't make a difference. That's not true. It makes every bit of difference. And regrettably, uh, it, it, the worst part about it is we are going to see more and more of special interests take hold, uh, people that don't represent your interests. They may look like they represent this because that's what they're going to tell you. But at the end of the day, they don't represent your interest. You're the only one who can <coughs> represent your own interest. And so consequently, voting is the way to do it. And the last thing I'm going to say, I hope it never gets to a point as it did in El Salvador. When I was visiting in El Salvador and they were going through elections, um, what they do in El Salvador is they paint your thumb black once you mm -hmm. vote, right? Mm -hmm. And so in El Salvador, if a, if a policeman catches you without your your black um, uh, thumb, um, you will get hauled in to vote. <laughs> At that time, the gorillas, if they catch you with, with your thumb painted, they shoot it off. That's how serious the elections were in El Salvador. So hopefully it'll never get to that point, and that, but it is, so that's how important it truly is. Um, and, and, you know, again, we have transfer. We have, you know, uh, an opportunity to do so much. I don't know what it's going to take. I am disappointed every <coughs> single election time, seeing less and less people vote. But I think it goes back to to the responsibility that Mr. Walker told us: is we all have a duty as leaders to read our newspaper every single day, <laughs> and not just complain about it, but to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And of course, voting is the least you. Uh, maybe if we changed it to a Saturday, it would work. But I, I don't think that's the answer. I'm not sure I know an answer. Uh, everybody claims that now just because you're going to be a, have a driver's license, you'll now be a voter. That's a good thing. I think it lends to more. But still, you still need to go out there and be an informed voter. And I don't know why there isn't the passion within young people in recognizing and understanding that. I, I don't understand it. I come out of a time when we at 18 were, the men in our community were being drafted into the Vietnam War, and at 18 at that time, you couldn't vote. You had to be 21. So here they were living the consequences of political votes, and yet, and dying for it, uh, and weren't even able to exercise their vote at the time. Uh, and luckily that changed eventually. But I, I hope it doesn't have to be that dramatic in order to create the motivation to vote. Uh, because I just think it is one of, of the most precious things that we have. And it's, a, it's a sim the simplicity of it is beyond belief of how simple it is to vote, particularly if you vote by mail. So I don't know. I wish I had a good answer for you, President Hertzberger, but I don't. Um, but make I sure every Whittier student registers uh, I vote. hope not only register, but they have to vote. You don't know how critically important it is. Uh, and when we look at our country and we look at our community, those people that are not voting, and particularly for Latinos, can I say this about Latinos? Recognize that there's a large population of Latinos that do not have a <coughs> right to vote. They are not citizens and will not be for a long time. So your vote is even much more significant because you're voting for a larger community that cannot. So if you could think of yourself as, as the kind of power that you have by that is very, very important. But it is.
is one of the tragedies of our society today is that people don't feel empowered, that they don't feel that it makes a difference. And that is really shameful. And believe me, I, I would love to find what it would take to motivate it. Um, right now, it's, right, what I do is push and scold and Push. I'll keep pushing and keep scolding. Because I hate to go around yeah. shooting off their... their yeah. <laughs> no, I think we just need to motivate them and push them too. And I think that's part of our leadership responsibility as well. And regrettably, there are probably many leaders that aren't creating the kind of motivation that we need today. Or maybe we need to get with social media. I don't know what it's going to take to do it, but we've got to get moving in that direction. Well, that will end on that. Very inspirational.